Chise yach satinil te cut you hon, ach tu ye gay, wuchin has a tea. Tade had no good kelis a coo, was at Kukone yachon. Ye awa, we unwark, has to ink had was teen. Ka, what you hunt so ye to our saguan, ya a jeet at our sagu, we zoom. Cadul chechi at Yahana. When nuts at tea, you gee, you retunk at that, you regard it la art. Ha wasa we ha a yer set he, ha you retungi teen. A day ha a day ha a clack a day ha a yer set he. A good cheese you hon, you keha. It's wonderful to see everyone. Uh, sorry if you didn't get the note about um, the schedule changes for tonight and for the next week. Uh, we'll be all on Zoom uh, next week. I'll be Zooming in from Santa Fe. There's a dual language conference going on down there I'll be attending. And tonight we had, uh, I was invited to be in visiting with the Elder Circle at Clinkett and Haida. I sent out the Zoom link, but I'm not sure if everybody got it. It was kind of maybe just a couple hours ago. Sorry, it's been uh, it's been a bit of a stretch here. Uh, but I do think that it was recorded, and we will go over those two stories. Uh, one of them is Ak uh which I, we might have listened to already from Cyril George, but I I told it with a slightly different version. Uh, and then there's a story called The Woman Who Married a Frog that it was a translation work. And we'll go over both of them. Uh, probably The Woman Who Married a Frog a bit more because it's a shorter story and we can actually dive into it and start looking at some of these things that we've been studying. Um, I thought we'd do something on laughing verbs, but I might wait. We'll see, kind of see how it goes. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a couple things. We're going to go over some Halloween phrases that we went over today in the language nest because it's that time. We're going to just make up a little booklet on like holiday phrases because it seems like every year at Christmas we're digging around for the same screenshot of some document that lives somewhere and and so uh, instead of doing that we'll just have sort of a, and we'll have something we can add to as well as we think of more things to to talk about and sometimes taking a decolonial approach and but there's other approaches you could take as well it depends uh, what your intentions are and we're just trying to make the language available for folks to use uh, so anybody got any questions or thoughts before we get started okay so i will put this on our class uh, web page tonight there are three known names, I think, for Halloween. Uh, and again, it kind of depends on what, what you want to do. And I'll tell you why there might be three different names for it. So the first one is Nakhtati uh, Yagi. And these could be Yagi, but I think Yagi is just fine. Nakhtati Yagi. That is, uh, anybody know what Nakhtati is? Weeds. Say it again. Wheats. Mm, wheats. Like. So a, whoops. I don't know, I was trying to move my thing. Okay, so nak a te. Uh, it comes from nak and a te. So it literally means master of the medicine uh, but it is our word for a witch, which is a different concept in a pre-contact world. Uh, but so you have witches day or witch day, you know, like W-I-T-C-H. The other name that I have seen going around is Atskani Yagi. And uh, I guess I would translate that literally as ah day. So atskani it does not mean scary. It's like what you say when something is scary. So it, it doesn't, I just want to make sure that we know that you can't use it like a verb. There, there's a different verb which we could take a look at, but atskani is just like saying, ah, it's just whatever you have to yell when you are scared. You see that giant 
rats or you see whatever the thing is that's scary that's the thing you say and then Halloween is just clingish and that's fun and funny we do those types of things all the time uh, okay so uh, some of these come from a book that we were using that talks about these things being around the house mostly people wearing costumes and so that's where some of the vocabulary comes from and uh, and these are just fun so we're gonna make like a book of these so that folks have them and uh, if you want to use Klingit around the, these different holidays I think that's a cool idea so a candle is tu tsina tu tsina and these are two different nouns tsina is a light or a lamp and tu is tallow. So fog is tukwas. Tukwas. A ghost is tsikikawu. Tsikikawu. It does look a lot like a smoke person. Uh, and if you look in the dictionary, you'll see there's a few different things that have Sikikawu in its name. Like uh, there's a berry that grows around here that in English I think people call watermelon berries. And in Shinget they are called Sikikawu Tleku. And it might be Tleku, but it's ghost berries. And when I asked an elder, I was like, did we eat these? And they said, no. But there's a lot of people who eat them. They are edible. So, uh, And then also that um, puffball mushroom, which is also a medicine, is which is the ghost's face paint. So there's two versions for the word giant. Uh, the one that I would most commonly use is Kustin at. at. And also, I've heard speakers from Atlan say kudziti at. Kudziti at. And there is a difference between this as far as meaning goes. Kudziti at is a living thing, something that exists. And kustin at is a monstrous or giant. Thing. We might need to come up with a shorter name for pumpkin. Uh, we have been coming up with names for things like uh, pineapple. We are calling it dashluni tlek, which would be a fruit with bark around it. Uh, cantaloupe, we're calling huas da tlek, which would be uh, canvas fruit, just because of the way the outside of it looks. Uh, just because we don't, we're in the nest, we don't want to say pineapple, cantaloupe. Uh, so we're coming up with names as we see things based on how naming practices commonly work in Tlingit. Well, I'm having a hard time with a pumpkin. I was like, well, I'll just look up what they call it in Hawaiian. And they have, it's got a P sound and an L sound, I think. And it's a, it's their word for a gourd because they have, they have a gourd there. So we don't have anything that I can think of that's pineapple-like. The closest thing we came to was someone said it looks like a dried out um, sea urchin shell. So... Stay tuned, there might be something coming forward with that. Or maybe Daka Nuku Tlek would work. Like a... Because then we get into the also this debate about is it a fruit? And so I think because it has seeds, maybe it's a fruit. And you make pie, like a sweet pie out of it. But I don't know. Okay. So this one is long. Kaudua Chaku Sheuk Yachyati At. A thing, a carved orange thing. That's what that means. Uh, which, to talk about, you know, to give things name or to describe them, I would say, first of all, in pre-contact times, I do not think colors were important at all. It is very rare to find any language in 
bold stories that talk about colors whatsoever. The other thing that maybe supports that theory is there's usually not a true word for a color. You say it's like this thing, like that thing, and you have this standard list of things. There, usually you'll say the color noun, yach yatiyi noun. So for example, you want to say an orange cat, like Garfield, sheokh yach yatiyi douche. So that's where the change could come is right there. That's the noun that you could change. This is the other noun to change the color. Now, you can say, and I don't know how it really works, but there are instances where you can say things like glade cake, white dog. But I don't think that's historically how they liked to do that. Uh, there is an adjective, wu or y that can pop up, like you say, kit wu, a white killer whale. Uh, and then there's other ways to type. We'll do colors like some other time, but just to sort of see what's going on. Ask questions if you got them. We're going to go through this list of things. Uh, so a spider web is its web or its net. It's a kei wu. A kei wu. A bat that flies around is tsegeti tan or tsegeti tanu. Uh, and look, actually, let me check the let me check the tone on that real quick. While I'm checking the tone, anybody recognize anything in that word? It is a compound, which is different words smushed together. Uh, beaver. Yes. Beaver is the first part. Do I even have this in here? Oh, yeah. And is ton to like carry? Is that right? Carry something maybe? Carry? There is a carry, yes. Or... But there's also a body part called tanu. Tanu to nachwe dukani acha has to claw. A duck. Tokane has to ta toot a ha a ta no teen. A baby in the mother eats through it. It's the umbilical cord. I don't know why, but the the bat was born out of the umbilical cord of a beaver. But I've never heard the story about it. Uh, we had to go back and forth with skeleton because like a hoggy is how you say the skeleton of something. Ka hoggy would be a person's skeleton. But when we're using a skeleton, they usually talk in like Halloween. It's like usually up and walking around, right? So it's different. So then we went with which would be a person who has become a skeleton. And then we have a few different bones here. And I, I can't remember if we talked about this. We did a whole bunch of stuff with uh, this relational suffix, right? For body parts, you put that suffix on there if it gets removed. So these ones do have that suffix that we just learned. Because you could say, that's my rib. You could say achtzak, right? That's a bone, and you could say well chagi. It can't be chagi unless it's already. It means for like all the meat to dry off of it is basically what it means, because it could also mean a dried up shell, like a clam shell. So its rib that has been disconnected, achtzuku, achtzuku. And the disconnected bone, atsaki, atsaki. The skeleton of something, ahagi, ahagi. Then we get to our verb for scary. 
So there are two versions of this verb and they are different. So to say like, I am scared of it or I was scared of it, it's a different one than we see here. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. But to say scary, it is scary. This is descriptive, this is a verb, and it's so for a lot of verbs when you have a descriptive verb for something to be a certain way just like up here you add this letter yi right this follows all of those rules we learned for that relational suffix except for one thing it always stays low. This is one that we call an attributive suffix, and it doesn't matter if you remember that name. All that you need to know is it turns a verb into an adjective. So it means, just like this, uh, means for something to become a skeleton. It dried out. Or for a uh, mollusk shell especially, a word for a crab shell too, to completely dry up. And so, now it's become an adjective. Just like that, we see it here with at a scary thing, which is the name that Kakashat came up with for monster. at missing things in the chat sorry uh, yeah yeah because blueberry pie in Anishinaabe is extremely long we're not trying to compete with them for the longest word in the universe okay uh sweets we did go over this the other day there are different you can say chanuxiat that's using that same kind of eye that you have right here with uh, i think nuts is just fine it's just going right to the, the verb root there, which is probably comes from a noun, which means it's, it's a sweet thing. Then you have atskani, which is like, ah, right? That is an exclamation. It is not a noun or a verb. Atskani. Something to be orange. Sheikh yachyati. Sheikh yachyati. Anybody know what the noun is for that one? Sheikh. Uh, alder bark or, or red alders that red alder tree. red alder yep. for something to be black anybody know what that ooch is on its own charcoal charcoal so now we have um let's see how i do it okay so now we have uh, this we often translate as an alien, not necessarily like from outer space, but that's just like when you look at the old people and they start translating these Raven stories. Raven often called himself Gunate, but in a really weird way. So th this is what I mean. Like, so these kids are, these people are playing with fat. They're throwing it around because they're, it's supposed to be used for bait. I don't know why these kids were throwing it. But he went to go play with them, but he would just gobble it up. And then he heard about a place where they were using fat to bait halibut hooks. And so he goes to the edge of the ocean. And because he's raven, he picks it up like a blanket and walks underneath it. And he goes down to the bottom and he's just munching on all this fat and all these people who are fishing can't figure out why they're not, I don't feel anything. And every time I pull it up, my fat's gone. So they have this guy who was a master, what do they call him? Oh, I'm forgetting the verb now. He was the master of feeling when a fish would bite on a hook. He had a really long, they always have these really long names. And so they had him come out, they went and got him. And then he could, and Raven also got a little bit too overconfident and got a little bit too close to that hook. And when he felt Raven touch it, he jerked on it really fast. 
hooked him on his nose and pulled him and the, everybody's pulling him up and he's trying not to get pulled up and he looks up and he sees the underside of the boat and he's kicking on the bottom and pulling and finally they pull so hard they pull his nose right off and so he goes and makes a nose out of a piece of bark and he makes this thing called kashachuta tzach which is um the name for uh when the Unungach people would come over in Sukpiach and they had these long hats that they would wear when they go canoeing, we call it that same thing. It means a, a nose that got drug out. And it's also the name we use for a baseball cap. So he made he made himself a new nose out of bark. And he went looking for his own nose. And when they would answer the door, he'd say, he says, have you seen the alien's nose? So he that's what he would refer to it as. And I, he and he did that quite a bit. Kodnate. He'd call himself Kodnate, but in an indirect way. It's more like, I don't want you to know that I'm looking for my own beak. So I'll call it the alien's beak. Uh, so that one is Kodnate. And there's a whole bunch of things with Kodnaat and Kodnana. It means like something else, something different. A spider. The other. Yes, the other. And it's, you know, it's not uncommon. I was at a conference and there were some northern Dene folks who were teasing me because they said we, they call us aliens. And I said, well, we just call you some other thing. So right back at you, partner. Um, so this one is spider. And there's another name for spider, which I should put in here. And then I'll tell you. Let me check the tone too. Because the other one, Kanas At, is also a name that is generally used for bugs. So it's not always just a spider. Uh, but that's the same with um oh Askatu Yiksha, right? So Askatu Yiksha is another name for a spider. But that is sometimes a beetle as well. Like there's, I get a little confused with like all these different names for the, some of the little crawling things because I, I can remember most of them, but some of them they have, it's a little bit ambiguous. So the first one is, which is probably most commonly known is Kanasat. Kanasat. And that comes from a verb, right? And it's a kind of, Generally crawl around with a bunch of legs, I think is what it's talking about. And then the other one is Askatu Yiksha. Askatu Yiksha. And I guess one, two, well, one, two, three, four. There's kind of five pieces to that, right? And I want you to be able to just see these. Askatu Yiksha. Do you recognize any of those pieces? Is there is there a in the woods kind of bit to it? Yes, Oscar to Yik um, is in the woods. So, as is the tree, G is the stump of a tree, T is inside. So the word for in the for forest means in the tree trunks, which is wild, right? Because there's another one you can say as they wugud, they went hunting, but you're saying they went beneath the forest floor. So some of this stuff like gets really wild, I think. And so, but when you put them all together, you get askutu, right? So that means the forest, right? So that becomes its own noun. It's taken these words and frozen them to become a single noun. Then when you say yik, and we are gonna, we're about two or three weeks away from getting to these things, these around, under, on top of, beneath, it's a whole bunch of them. And the, the most, some of the most interesting ones are being in something because it like like Klinga always likes to ask it's like how do you say in something how is it in it is it shallowly in it is it in it and it's closed is it in it and it's open is it spillable is it yeah it's a is it like a cavity it's it's always got the you know Klinga always has these questions right and so yik is how you are in the woods 
and we'll get to the other things of Yik later. So now you've got forest in and Askutu Yiksha. So that leaves us with Sha. So in the woods, and then what is the Sha? Woman, right? Women. All right, so the another word for spider means women in the woods. And I also don't know why. Okay. okay. Spiders are the first weavers. Yes, yeah, well, right? And so there's probably something with that. And I've also we... heard of something relating them to grandmothers. Okay. Good cheese. Yes, and they're like it's pretty common in indigenous communities for them to have a sacredness to them, and so they're, you know, I don't I don't squish no spiders because I have a bad dream, so I try to bring them outside. I heard they're lucky if they're in your house. Yeah, I usually just move them to a different part of the house where people probably won't see them. But... Me too. Okay, uh, so a Halloween mask. Uh, is Yesha Yesha and this is also made up of two parts anybody know what those two parts might be so you have yes and ah but what if yes is a short version? What's the long version of yes if we stretch that vowel? Yes. Yeah, well. Yes. So yes is very interesting, right? Raven. So raven as a verb, I think, means to be an imitation. That's what I think it means. So when you say yesha, that means a counterfeit or an imitation. So if you say yesha dana, that's counterfeit money. So it means an imitation of one. And there's a verb, which is aushayesh. And this verb is like quite a large percentage of my career, I feel like, which is to act like you know what you're doing, but you really don't know what you're doing. It's one of my favorite verbs. And so it often comes off as pretend. Um, so it's your fake it till you make it type of thing, which is really interesting when you tie it back to Raven, which I guess we got to like add. Now we got to add this. Isn't there a uh, Yes. So this uh, yes is uh, oops, to lie, right? And I think, um, so you're gonna catch a couple of verb forms out here. And one of them is to play. And it's, you're gonna have usually ush kaudle something, right? So ush kaudle yet means let's play like we're children. So the verb root is child. But you can have ashkush cheta, ashkaudle cheta. They played basketball, right? And so you you have the play verb which goes ashkaudle, ashkaudle. There's another one which goes shkaudle. And so this one, uh, if we put it into the perfective, shkaudle is also another. Really, there's a couple of these things in Tlingit that are. They're not very predictable in terms of understanding how they work. They're predictable in, in terms of like saying how to put them together. But this means to pretend to do something. So for example, you could say, uh, I pretended to sleep. And this is one time, like, I don't know if this is an example of my bad parenting. I don't think it's too bad. Like sometimes you go somewhere, you go to a grocery store, your kids are like, you know, older than five or six you're like just stay here i'll be right back and you run into the store for not very long it's not like you're shopping for hours right 
And so I did that with my kids. Like, I just got to grab something for dinner. I was like, just stay here. Because sometimes bringing them in and bringing them out is a whole thing. Lock the doors and everything. And I came back. I wasn't gone very long. And I go walking towards my car. And I don't see any little heads. I'm like, oh, no. My fears are going to be affirmed. And I open the door, and they're laying on the floor. And I was like, what are you? That's a yay name. What are you doing? And they said, we saw a policeman, so we pretended we were dead. And I don't know what got them to do that, but that would be hashkaudlina. So this comes back. So if yesh is an imitation and yesh is raven, and ausha yesh is to pretend like you know what you're doing, but you don't, or to act like you're something that you're not, shkaudle yesh is to pretend that you are an imitation. And that's the word for lying. So I don't... Raven's got to always take us on these journeys. And there's one more you'll see down here. We'll jump to it. And that's to trick someone. You are going to raven them into getting lost. Put out Uh So I was think of like trick or treat, right? So let's work our way up there. And again, like our our mission with this stuff is to learn new vocabulary and just keep thinking about how the language works as we learn more and more. And we are going to have to kind of probably after next week, I want to start challenging you folks to start bringing some sample, some just some sentences that you write just so that you can start producing the language. And then we'll work up to responding to each other with a sentence. And it doesn't always have to be complete alignment, but I just want to make sure that we have an intention of using the language a lot more. Because I know we're flooding, I'm flooding you with stuff, right? And so. Put it on your head, like a hat or whatever. There's other ways to say these things, right? These are just, these are the ones we're going to sort of probably use for like, put on your if you have a mask part of your car, you have a big Mario head or whatever you are. Isha ye ni da'u. And then to put it on your body, ina ye ni da'u. Ina ye ni da'u. This one does use the D in the classifier because you're sort of changing yourself into something loosely, right? So then if you wanted to say, I was pilot bred for Halloween. Oops, that should be a U. No, that should be an I. What am I doing? Sorry. Or I dressed like a Pokemon. Pokemon yach shwadu. Okay. Uh, a cauldron. We I got this one from the Macbeth play. Casty claim. Costy claim, or you say cost claim, which would be a, um, let me both say that. Cost claim is a big barrel. Witchcraft, and this, there's a verb for this as well. We can look at some other time. He, he, and I guess just for. Oh, Does that have a negative connotation to it? Yes. It means uh, this is this is our word for the bad medicine, right? And we were talking about this a little bit today. Like I was talking with someone in when I was in college in Minnesota in the early 90s, and it was a very serious thing. Someone had use things from their body processes to create some food for someone to make them fall in love with them. And then that person turned into a stalker of them. Like it was very, it was really wild. It was a really intense conversation. So, and I also just want to recognize that some people will get uncomfortable with some of these terms and some of these things and talk about them. Um, but you could say, they put the bad medicine on them. And it's usually with an intention to do harm or to control somebody. Uh, blood, so that would be that I can remember doing twice. That would be blood that's usually removed from the body. 
right? So she is blood. She she ye is blood that has been removed. So then uh, I just came up with this one on the spot. Ka she ye atzikzika. Ka she ye atzikzika. But there's a bit of a um, I can't, I should do okay. Let me try a poll. I'm gonna try to create a poll. See if this works. I don't know if I can. Let me try. Okay. Uh, oh, whoops. And okay, so in your opinion, does a vampire have teeth that are like hollow and they suck blood like a straw, or do they bite and then swallow it in their throat like a much like a person drinks a beverage? <laughs> and so. I, I think it would still work because this does mean a person who sucks people's blood, like a blood sucker, right? But then I was, I was listening to a silly comedy podcast and they got in this argument over, and I'd never heard this before. Like, is it, is it like a straw or do they just bite a big hole and then swallow? I was like, I don't know. I never even thought of it. So it, it looks like it's overwhelmingly solid teeth because I don't know how it would have. Like if you get bit by a, by a vampire, are these tubes going to be growing out your teeth suddenly? It doesn't make any sense. But I guess when I thought, I was like, maybe I did think they had a straw. <laughs> Which I guess... Um, Halloween, we don't have time before Halloween, so I guess I got to do... Everybody vote. Looks like there's five non-participants. But that's still has a pretty good election turnout, I guess. A pretty good poll turnout is... 11 out of 6, but also 11 out of 15, because I don't think I can vote. So I guess I, I won't do the next one because we're going to run out of time. But the second one was they said apparently, and I hadn't realized this, there are people who say Reese's Pieces, and there are people who say Reese's Pieces. And I realized I was one of the Pieces people. And I don't know why. And then I had to push myself to say Reese's, right? Reese's? It should be Reese's Pieces, which kind of still rhymes. <laughs> okay, we're off the rails. It's okay. Uh, so keep in mind that Nak is contracted, so it's short and low. It comes from Nak. Then you have Hechwa. Hechwa. And this is a word, I think with he and hechwa, those are hard to define in short terms. Does anybody know what hechwa is? Well, didn't you say he was witchcraft? Yes. So is he, he do they have the same... They are related. So hechwa is the good medicine, right? But as far as like what this stuff is, um, is really interesting to me. And uh, I'm not telling anybody what to believe, believe whatever you believe in. But when a baby was born, like sometimes they used to do things, let's say, we want this child to grow up and to be, to have really dexterous, fast hands. So what they would do is they'd take a pine cone and tie it around the hands. Why a pine cone? Any 
guesses? Yes, because a squirrel is very good with their hands. They have very fast little hands, right? So, but there are times when sometimes this hechwa can be, like I, I was talking to one elder and she was saying, talking about like she was, she had been married and then she got separated, then she remarried. She said, my first husband, uh, when he was really young, he almost died and they used the hechwa on him and they kept him alive. But she says, they, maybe they did it too much because he was always so mean. He was so hard-willed and mean. And so it's not something that's always like a super 100% thing, right? It's spiritual energy. It's sometimes unpredictable. And it does make some people un uncomfortable. So uh, only use these if you want to. Uh, but it's also like to give like a lot of really intense encouragement if someone was getting ready to go do something that was difficult. They used to bring people in to rile up the young people, you know, and that would be hechwa, hasavta hechwa. So then we end with nuktz achtuwa sagu. So there's an achtuwa sagu phrase. You can substitute anything into that front part where the noun is. Uh, and then I will trick you. They tricked them. You're not going to trick me. And then the longest one. Uh, did I miss something? I did, huh? Maybe if you don't give me any candy, I will trick you. So uh, I'll put these, I think I got to fix a couple things. Um, I'll put this on our class page tonight. Any thoughts or questions? Can we put, I'm going to hide in my house with the lights off so no trick-or-treaters come to my door on this list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pretend like I'm not home. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes. So hide let's... from the children? <laughs> I know, isn't that bad? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we would have Nech ye, so that's in in the home. Um, cook, push, scene. I will hide myself. And then, okay. Clash. Ah, sa. Ach, hitty, day, oops, hitty, day, una, good, ga. I think that's okay. I think that's what it'd be. The one thing I'm not sure, I think it actually might be this. Nechika kwasin. Uh, so there's a couple of things, right? And, and we're going to start like looking at verbs and what they tend to do. And Klingit has a lot to it. And the verb is the biggest, most complex part of it. That's the heart of the language. So we do a lot of stuff to get us up there. And as we start getting further and further along, getting close to verbs, we start taking a closer look at them. So you do have one that's in the future, and it is what we call plus D, and we're going to learn what that means. But that means if you're doing something to yourself, then that moves into this category we call middle voice. This is, uh, and I'd have to check this one just to make sure I got it right, but there is a way to say, there's two things you can use say. You can say, so it happens, and so it doesn't happen. Right, so you could say, uh, I will hide in my home so no one comes 
to my house. Right? That's really what you're saying there. And then you could say, see na, uh, kaguhtagan, ahiti, de, Okay, so then I'm going to use on a good it. Uh, I am, the light will be on, so people will come to my house. And uh, I just want to like to just show you how these look, because these, when we look at verbs, we we take a slower walk than this, right? We go, okay, let's just look at these verbs. Let's learn how to start changing things in the verb, and now let's start changing the verb around from like, happened, will happen, is happening, those types of things. And there are some that get a little bit complicated, and two of the more complicated ones I think are so it doesn't happen. And so it does happen. And so, um, oops, I left out a G. And so, that's it for that. Other thoughts or questions? Ah. I noticed the words for so it doesn't happen and so it does happen seem to have the, the stem of like goo, like, which I thought was like. Go or come, maybe? Yes. Yeah. So that would be good, nagu. And so that it does change a lot. And so basically, uh, let's see. Hold on. It's the night of a it's the night of a million tabs. So let me start a new window here so you don't have to see all that. But just uh, as a bit of a preview for how this stuff does work, right? Because I think uh, we're not going to be scared of it. Are we just going to open it in that? Okay, fine. Okay. Just look at a million tabs, I guess. So we'll go down to Goot. Okay. So if we go down to Goot, and let me zoom in a bit. There's a lot to verbs when people, when things start moving around. Those are the most complicated verbs, I think, of all the verbs. They're the champion verbs. So what we are looking for here is we've got day on there, right? And so day is towards. And we're just going to say, okay, that one has day. That's the one we're going to look at. We'll learn all the other stuff later. But if we click here to expand it, and we just say, like, look at how this verb changes, right? So we go here and we know it should end in goot. There are a few verbs where the ending falls off in the command form, and this is one of them. So you'd say, ade nagu, go towards it. Don't go towards it. Uh, you can also say, I would probably prefer this one because that's the one I heard the old people say. Adeya nagut will stick with third person, please. They are going there. Kesh adeya unagut. They are not going there. Ade wugut. They went there. Kesh ade wugut. They didn't go there. Uh, we're going to skip that one. Adek kogut. They are going to go there. Kesh adek kogut. They won't go there. The futures will always be exactly the same, but the negative one will be low tone. The positive will be long and high. So then we get a hortative. Aden kagut. So in advanced Lingit, we're working on, I'm trying to work on this way of teaching verbs to say, if you can do this one, you can do this other one. So if you wanted to say, like, you say, let me go there. 
Atain Kagut. Let me go there. Like you're asking permission, right? You can add an IT at the end of this, and that's that would be so I could go there. I put my shoes on so I could go there. So if you if once you learn and a horlive is harder to do, right? It's got na and it's got ka in there. Right. And we'll learn why. We will learn why. But there's basically these magic combinations, poof poof, got that kind of verb. Ade nagutch, they always go there. Klesh ade unagutch, they haven't gone there yet. Klesh aden kwakudiye, they can't go there. Aden kwakudin, they would have gone there. Ade nagutni, when they go there. Adeyu yagutk, they regularly go there. And then the last thing we'll look at is, and, and again, we're, this is all sneak preview stuff, right? Just so that when you see it later, you're not scared. Because we'll build up, we just keep building up to this stuff. But I want you to see the pieces that are there. So to be afraid of something, you do usually have like this thing like there's you mark what you are afraid of and it sits outside of the verb right so you could say kate i'm afraid of the dog right kate or sorry i'm afraid of the dog verbs <laughs> no take I'm not afraid of it. But so some of these verbs are, they got a lot going on, right? This one has a lot going on. It's got this uh on the front of it all the time. It's got k all the time. It's got u uh all the time. The classifier likes to be dl and then hate. And this little x means it's long and high all the time. And Saul Neely, we used to say, decolonization, ach, I'm not afraid of it. Any other last questions or thoughts before we go? Yeah. Um. I do have a an old uh, an old thought in mind from from another time, and it sure seems to be timely a little bit. And I wonder uh, there might be a couple of words I don't remember, but um, let's see what what you think of this. Adawut, 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 yay. Jinneka Adawut Han Kagan Kast Gushok 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 Yakast Into the cauldron, yeah, away. That's from there you go. Sling it, Macbeth, gonna cheese. <laughs> Um, that's the the bubble bubble part right wait there you go let me see if i can find this real quick if i remember right the other wood is a it's like a a hammer or is it a no it's a dagger like maybe it's war or chaos okay okay Okay, that's right. Chaos, gee. Adawuk. Adawuk. There we go, and I'll put this link on our class webpage tonight. There is uh, the script given to us by Nawaya from his, when 
because we were all there in Macbeth in what 2007 15 years ago mm. oh um, my gosh yeah it'll be fun we'll take a look at some of that language over the course of the next few months and just have fun with some of those parts that are in there Chase Yuhan, have a wonderful weekend and uh Tuesday, don't forget to look at that translation exercise, 10 sentences. Do as much as you can, and we'll go through it all together. We'll see what you guys came up with. Oh.